okay, old Waltrip. Oh, Waltrip, just reach your parents. as I tell you, pull those belts tight. All right. Oh, boogity, oh, boogity, oh, boogity. Let's go racing, old boys. There you heard Mike Joy talking about it, the high line. Ryan Newman in the 12th car. He gets a jump on Elliott Sadler through one and two and pulls him down the back stretch. Yeah, Ryan just had to, you know, had to write. He was up there on the outside. That's a good, that's where you want to be going into turn one, and it paid off. But here comes Elliott charging back on the inside. Got that Yates. Yates horsepower wound up, and he's going for the lead. Right there, folks, is where you've got to let up. The guy on the outside has got to let the guy on the inside go, or you'll wreck. You can't go through there too wide. About the best thing you can hope for when you go into turn one is that guy will push you up, and you can put the crossover move on him. Sure, we'll see that a lot today. Oh, yeah. Matt, Matt Kenseth did not get off to a particularly good start, but it doesn't appear there's anything wrong with his car. Just being a little cautious and letting tires come up to temperature and pressure. That's the whole thing here. It's always being cautious. Don't put yourself in a position where somebody can wreck you. And you can go out there and you can run your car hard in the first eight or ten laps, but you're going to pay the price 30 or 40 laps in the run. You're going to use the good up in those tires way too early. Jerry Nadu. Coming hard in that black army Pontiac at the bottom of your screen. Took second from Newman, and now he sets sail on the leader. You don't see many people drive by Ryan Newman, no. I can tell you. <laughs> they do's pumped, and that Pontiac looks good this weekend. It's the best we've it's seen in that final practice yesterday, the 48. Car. Yeah, I think the 48 and the 20. Here comes Jeff Gordon underneath the 12 of Ryan Newman, and trouble Jerry Nadu. The second place car spins. And he'll probably. He gets it turned back around because if he hadn't, he'd have went to the bottom of the racetrack. The caution is out. Did he make contact? I don't think so, Daryl. Matt Kenseth spins coming off turn two. I think he might have got tagged from behind trying to slow up. That that can happen so easily off that corner over there. You come through three, uh, one and two wide open, and somebody lets up in front of you, you can't help but get in the back of him. I, I don't think they do hit anything. He went in all by himself, Daryl, and I'm not sure if the car got upset on entry or if something happened in the middle of the corner. I don't see damage on the car whatsoever. I think he was very, very, very lucky. I thought Nadu was French, not Irish. But this weekend, everybody's Irish. And <laughs> you take all the shamrocks you can get. Well, he just made a big withdrawal from the luck bank. I can tell you that. <laughs> When you're running second, you spin in front of the whole field coming at you in the middle of the corner. And a car that somebody doesn't run into you and you don't hit the wall. Uh, that's I guess three, I would that's call three that, trips. I guess I would call that good luck. You said it. And we've only run about six laps. I, I'm going to anticipate most of the leaders will stay out, but probably Jerry Nadu, Matt Kenseth will be to pit road for four fresh tires. Yeah, the back part of the field will come down pit road. Here he goes. He just gets in there. That's where that's Jamie after, McMurray clipped Matt Kenseth in the 17, Jamie McMurray in the 42. That was right over in the middle of turn two after Jerry Nadeau had spun. You know, I think Larry, and I'm, I'm not sure we'll see it from further back. Jerry's already around, but you can see he was all by himself and did not make contact with the wall or another car. Let's see if Kenseth comes into play here. They all have to go to the apron because they can't see for the smoke. That's what happens. Everybody goes down on the apron. They can't see for the smoke. You get down there, it's real dirty and sandy. The, that apron is, is really, really slick. There's where Kenseth and McMurray got together yep. right there. Yep. You get down on that apron, and even when you're trying to come on in. the apron in turn two, and that was kind of a gutsy move this early in the race. And there it is. He's in trouble. Right. Yep. He just got into Sterling, and Sterling got into the wall, I believe. Sterling's left front fender is killed as well. This track. Oh, there is Sterling's in the wall. Turn one. Hard. Bob Labonte's in trouble. 18 oh, car. Out, 18 oh, car is wrecking. How's your car, buddy? 29 spun. 74's in it, and Sprague and Harvick are there. Caution is out. I mean, I think that was a product from what happened all the way over here on the front stretch. That started off at turn two. Yeah, yeah, started over there. Got everybody wadded up there behind them, and they just know where to go. Trying to pass the slower car of Brett Bodine. Yep. This track is only so wide. Patience is a virtue, but gosh, Daryl, it's so hard to be patient. I don't think I've ever seen these guys racing as hard as they are right now, early in a race like it, like this here at uh, at this racetrack. Yeah, 
48 car is going to have damage and certainly had probably ruined Sterling's day right there because he got damage on both sides of his car. This was coming in off the front can't, stretch he, into turn one. Sterling can't turn the car. The left front fender's got the steering locked up. Let's look up toward the top of the frame right over here. Okay, he's now it's going to unfold right here. Yeah, he, he just the left front tire was rubbing on the fender and it wouldn't turn going in the corner. And there, Bobby Labonte, he, he may he have gets, got tagged from behind, and he gets hit by Ke Kevin Harvick in the 29 as well. I, I don't think I've seen a position. A lot of cars to fight. And this is when you come back out and you have a caution right now, something happens to you, and you, you, you know what you're going to say. And this late in the race, nobody's going to give you a break we, of no kind. We had no business back there in the first place. But Martin is still in it to win it. He's one of 11 cars on the lead lap as we get the restart with 52 laps to go in Darlington. Jimmy Johnson in the wall off turn two. Yeah, he just shoved up there, got up on top of it, died. Not sure he's gonna, have, I don't think it hurt it that much. It's still going. This is where you kind of forget about racing the racetrack, getting this late in the race. Boy, Kurt Busch, he got a heck of a runoff turn two. He's right up on the rear bumper, Jeff Gordon. He's going to pull to the inside, heading down the back stretch. He wants the lead of this race. Missed his pit under the green flag earlier, lost six spots. Now he's right back in it and that does the big slide. I saw, saw him do that once before, and he didn't quite make it. <laughs> he said, I'll fall back in here and try that again. And while they were doing that, Elliot Sadler in the 38 pulls right up on Kurt Busch's rear bumper. And a three wide here. Uh, Jeff Green gets a bit of bumper from Bill Elliott. And there's Matt Kenseth back with them up front. Bush going to try it again. Yeah, Same song, whale second verse. Run off of that second turn. But boy, Jeff Gordon drives it down in there to three and four. Come on in there, Elliott. You make it three. Let's get a three way battle going here. This looks like that high line is just the way to go through three and four. You keep that momentum. There's a lot better grip up there. Boy, Kurt Bush got to be careful going here. Ah! Good job. Elliot Sadler's the one that's got it. But Jeff can't get off a of turn two over there. He's pushing and the car's a little too tight. Yikes. Elliot Sadler, he ran out of racetrack over there. He's going to possibly lose second position. But boy, he bailed her off into turn three. Nah, he, did. he just got out there and got real close. <laughs> Look at the Darlington strike. Elliot Sadler's going to make a run for the lead against Jeff Gordon. And watch how this turns out. Yeah, I mean, when that happened right there, Kurt Busch was four or five car lengths behind him at the start finish line. Elliott was just being real, he was just being too cautious. And he didn't, you know, it's late in the race, he doesn't want to mess up. I understand that, but this cat here was back far enough. He got that momentum off of turn two, and around both of them, he went, baby. And Sadler knew you can't go into that corner three wide, somebody's got to lift. Wow. Just, there's just so much momentum. I mean, the 97 was wide open off that corner where the other two were pedaling, trying to keep off each other. So Kurt Busch is the new leader, and he has driven away. It took Sadler a while to get past Jeff Gordon. Took him two laps to finally seal that deal. So Kurt Busch now has a 1.4 second lead. But boy, Jeff Gordon, when he went, he went. He has dropped all the way back to eighth position, Darrell. I think he just used that right front tire. We heard him say he's been pushing off the corner, and I think the right front tire is gone on that race car. And guess what? Good. It places where you slide around. What did he do most of his career? Slid around most of his Slid career. And, and guess where we're going cars. next week? You got to have a little of that high bank slide around attitude. Oh, Gordon's in the wall. Gordon's in the wall, and Kenny Wallace got into the back of him. No caution. Oh, well, God, right we're going to stay gone. green. Ten laps to go. The right front gone on Gordon's car. Ten to go. And Darrell, looking at this lead pack, how about Ricky Craven and Dave Blaney in second and third? First, let's see uh, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he gets happened. into turn two, uh, three here. Car goes up the hill, up the hill. Looks like she just doesn't want to turn, and bam, right in the in wall it goes, and that's just no grip, lack of grip. Almost collected Kenny Wallace. Kenny Wallace bammed into the back of him, but he kept on going. But look at second and third place as Gordon comes around, and he'll go to pit road with nine laps to go. You have single car teams running in second and third. You have the, the Roush juggernaut leading this race uh, with 
Bush first and Mark Martin in fourth, but single car teams second and third. How about that? But there's that 97 car could win every race we go to. He is that good. That car is that good. They don't. If they have no engine failures, they have no mechanical failures. That cat can win every race. And you know what? Jack Roush has to be feeling good about that race car up there within a, less than 10 laps of leading this race with all the motor problems. There you see Jack Roush there. Jeff Burton, their teammate, losing a motor early in the race. He has to feel good right now. And I bet he can't wait to get back to the shop to tear these engines apart. Yeah, and he's got Mark up there in fourth place, too. So, I mean, he's had it. You know, got a lot of cars going to have some trouble. It's been feast or famine for Kurt Busch this year. Second at Daytona, second at Rockingham, out of the race at Vegas and Atlanta and a win at Darlington, perhaps. I don't There's know. Matt. I wouldn't count it as a win, man, because that 32 is coming, I'm telling you. Well, the 24 is in DW. They're pulling out the fender on the right front, changing all four tires. He's good to go. Four lap, four races at Darlington have been determined by a last lap pass. Joe Weatherly, Leroy Yarborough, Darrell Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt for the fellows who did it. And 37 is buzzing and stuff banging off the corner today. The only catching in the line. Laney a little kicks the uh, back in there. going to catch 97 and we'll be right there, buddy. <laughs> And what they're telling Dave Blaney is it looks like Ricky Craven will catch Kurt Busch. Oh, come on, get out of the way, get out of the way. <laughs> and the hopes will be while they're racing side by side, he can get up there with these guys, but they better hurry. Five laps to go, but Ricky Craven is only a half a second back. They have fairly clean racetrack in front of them. Craven's faster by far, and it, I, I tell you, he's got time. It's going to be really exciting, really, really exciting. Craven is so good through three and four. And he is it, all the way against that wall he, through three and four. I think he's just using that to hold him in the racetrack, because here he comes, baby. Four laps to go this last, time. Last time it happened here on the last lap, 1987, Dale Earnhardt beat Bill Elliott. 1979, when Darrell beat Richard Petty on the last lap. Jeff yeah, Gordon put the old crossover move on him, and that could happen again today. Jeff Gordon's problems continue. He has to come back to pit road. Watch Still Craven. Wrong with watch right watch Craven on this end of the racetrack. Really gets off the turn four hard. Here he comes. He's there. He'll make the move on him. Going down into turn one, he's going to put the move on him. Three right. laps to go. Craven's going to. The, the thing that Craven is really good. He's good in three and four. Looks like they're pretty even on this end of the racetrack. Yeah, he don't really pull away from him coming off turn two, but right here, going down into turn three, this is where we'll watch him. Watch one this. and a half laps to go. Watch this. Here he goes. Craven gets that high right out next to that wall. Watch. Right watch there. Him close. Right there in the middle. Cuts down. He's going to make a down. He's going to get down under him. That's not the way to do it. I don't know. Come on, baby. Come on. Side by side. Two laps to go. Somebody's got to give. Getting into turn one. Nobody. And in the wall goes Bush. That's not, that was not a very good idea. Look, the crossover move, he got into it. Come on, clear. Good job, man. Hang in there. And here comes Blaney. Blaney oh, oh, is oh. now the best car on the track. Oh, baby, I'm telling you, Kurt Busch is not going to give up the win. No, he's not. They'll be coming to the white flag this time. Ricky Craven's not going to give up either. Come on, Ricky. He gets that right on the high side right there. Kurt Busch looks Come like on, he's baby. struggling with his race car. Here he Let's comes. Here we go hurt. again. He's going to wait on him. He's going to put the crossover on him. He realized that wasn't a good move that last time. White flag. Here he goes. He's going to try to slide under him here. Come on, baby. And Blaney's coming. I mean, both these cars are driving terrible right now. Nah. Not allowed to go. Nah, they're driving good. Come on, baby. You can do it on this end of the speedway. Come off the four and get up alongside of him. Half a mile Here he go. comes. Here he comes. Who's going to get off? Here he four? comes. Here he comes. He's got him this time. It's going to be a drag race. Wow. Oh. They touch. They touch. Craven got him! Craven got him! Craven got him! And Craven! All right! What a finish! Have you ever? No, I've never! Wow! <laughs> what a finish! <laughs> that is one happy group right there. That's one great race. I'm going to tell you, it's the goodest race I've ever seen at Darling. Scott Miller gets his first win as a crew chief. Pontiac gets a win. 
Kyle Wells' engine program gets a win. First year for that engine program. And for the fifth time in Darlington history, a race is settled with a last lap pass. <laughs> we didn't have a last lap pass for the no, win baby, last year. <laughs> That's the end of that. <laughs> that was a last at the start finish line pass there. What a race. I got to see this again. I do too. Let's, let's watch. Coming off turn four onto the front stretch. That's about as close as it'll get right there. And this right here, I don't know what kept them from both widening them up down here in turn t uh, turn one, but bam, oh boy, Craven really shot out into it. It is amazing they didn't wreck after they crossed the start finish line. Darrell, if instead of Bush coming down into Craven, if he stays straight, does he beat Craven? I don't think he had any choice, Mike, because Craven came off the bottom and really slammed into him. I think they got hooked together and couldn't get apart. Look at Craven in there. Look at him fighting that steering wheel. And That's it's a, a good lie. thing that Pontiac's got the kick out on the nose. Yeah, that was the difference. <laughs> but he wouldn't have won. Look at how close this finish is. Oh. Right there. Wow. <laughs> oh, baby. And I'm going to tell you what, they didn't even need seats in these grandstands because nobody was sitting down. And I, nobody's leaving. Look at this, right to the line, how close can you get it? But now, what's really, when they get on down here, I mean, I, I thought they were both going to wad him up and they'd have to take him to victory circle on the rollback. Steve Burns with the runner-up. All right, thanks, Mike. Kurt Busch, that was a hell of a race at the end. Tell us your point of view. Tell us about the last lap, last corner. I had to get a lead. The power steering went away, and I've never felt a heavier car in the world. We dug and dug and dug, and, and like 10 to go, it finally just gave up all together. And the car was so tight, I couldn't hang on. And, you know, it, it was an awesome race. I didn't give him one, room in one, and he didn't give me room out of four. It's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, this was some hard fought racing. Kurt, when you came across a start finish line hooked together with a 32, did you know who got there first? We came out of four, and the wheels snapped out of my hands because I had no power steering. So it looked like I turned into him, and I grabbed all the wheel I could to turn him back to the right. And I looked at his A post, and it was right here with my A post. So, you know, it's tough. We finished second again, and, you know, all the congratulations to the Rubbermaid team on what they do, all the hard work that goes into it. You know, we're just missing one little piece, and if we can get a full commitment and make sure that we run every weekend like we're supposed to, we can win some races. Thanks, Phil. All right, let's go back up to the booth. Kurt Busch will climb from 14th to 6th in the NASCAR Top 10. Look no, at no, this he, finish. He climbed to the top of my list. Here's the whole last lap. Craven out of control, Bush into the wall. I thought Craven had him here, but Bush doesn't give up on him, gives you a little wow. shot, gets him loose. Had to get completely out of the throttle. Yep. Look how far Kurt pulls away from him right there. But Kurt couldn't get back in the gas either off of two, so here comes Craven, got some momentum. Here I come, here I come, boogity, boogity, boogity. <laughs> and watch out, baby. This end of the racetrack, Craven was so good down here. Boy, look at the run he got on the high side right, right. there. And he comes to the white flag and has one more opportunity. And, and, and here's what he, he knew this time. He said, okay, I made the mistake last lap. I tried to pass him going into one. It didn't work. He's not going to give me that line. I'm going to set him up down here where I know I'm good. So he lays off of him, gets a run on him right here because he knows he's better in three and four. And where would you want to be better? You're coming to the start finish line, best to be good in three and four. Here he goes. He gets up there. Now, he, watch him nail the gas. Makes a run up on him. He says, I got to go to the bottom. Push wibble, wiggles a little bit. And here he comes. And Craven just, bam, got loose. And if Kurt hadn't been there, I think he'd hit the wall. <laughs> Eight wheels was better than four right got there. Got that right, baby. <laughs> this is on great racing, man. And for all you fans out there that says NASCAR racing has been boring lately, oh. take this. I'm a telling you. Like those cars were welded together. Well, you think about Kurt Busch and uh, Dale Jarrett at Rockingham. Now Kurt Busch and Ricky Craven here today. Let's go to Gatorade Victory Lane, Dick Berggren. Ricky Craven, congratulations. Come out out of your race car, my friend. Ricky Craven drove the wheels off it today. The crew is cheering him as they should be. What a run. Oh, here we go. Everybody gets wet. <laughs> hey, that last lap, how sure were you that you were going to be able to make it to the start finish line and not wreck? Oh, my gosh. I had no idea, but I, you know, I've done this for over 20 years. And as a racer, that's it. You dream of that, you know, and uh, 
being a New England boy and, uh, you know, being attached to this sport, NASCAR, my whole life, I knew there was none, none any tougher than Darlington. So that's the one I wanted to win the worst. And, uh, wow, this is sweet. I uh, just got to thank everybody. Thank everybody back home. And uh, it's amazing that you can drive and pray at the same time, but I was doing it. Were you holding your breath on those last couple of laps? You're puffing. I wasn't holding my breath, but I was working pretty hard. It may, it did, maybe it didn't look that hard, but I'll tell you what. Kurt is such a good racer, and we got together. And I don't know why we didn't wreck with a couple laps to go. And then we said, well, let's try it again. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, it was absolutely the most fun I've ever had. Really thankful to have the opportunity to be driving the, the Tide Pontiac and to have this group of people. and. Uh, Really thankful I got these three, Kay, Riley, and Everett. And life's good. It is good. Congratulations. It's great for the fans who enjoyed this race as well. To Jeannie Zelasko. Well,